So we know the issues. We know about energy. We know about the border. We know Joe Biden doesn't know what he's doing. We know all that. We get all that. But why do this? Why do this here tonight with Legacy Pack? Because there's a whole lot of people who have the passion to save this country who need help getting off the ground. The purpose of Legacy Pack is to save America. That's our mission. That's what we really want to do because America is worth saving. Uh, I am by trade, I'm a cybersecurity engineer. Okay, so this is my first run in, in politics. We need more conservative Republicans standing up and fighting for the Constitution. We're an America First Pack and we want to promote and help our uh, up and coming uh, candidates, and uh, we're going to be holding the line for President Trump. I joined the Army at 17 years old. My first day at my first unit, which was 25th Infantry, was September 10th, 2001. So the next day was 9 11. And I spent about a, a total of a decade between Iraq and Afghanistan in country. So my country means everything to me. When I realized that if people like myself who don't want to be politicians don't start stepping up and taking these seats that nothing's going to change, then I said, okay, I'll do it. Who deserves to lead the people of this country more than those who serve this country? So I'm behind every one of them. So let's, uh, let's, let's make sure we get more veterans into, into power. I, I'm all for it. Remember why you're involved. We have to make sure people remain humble and not engage in self-glorification. You are here for one reason, and that is to save the country. Period. End of story. And for those candidates who are looking uphill and wondering how, keep your head down, focus on the target, and outwork everybody. And I promise you, you're not going to lose. You're either going to win on election night, or you change the game on election night. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much for coming back. Under this administration, they have deliberately opened the border to fundamentally change the fabric of our country. I'm Jared Craig with Legacy Pack. We are here at Eagle Pass, Texas to bring attention to the border crisis, to educate the voters, the citizens of the United States, and the candidates running for federal office the importance of a secure border. And at Legacy Pack, we want to bring candidates here to the border to see it firsthand because there is nothing like being here seeing this. We saw women and children climbing over barbed wire. There is no reason why we cannot secure this border. There is no reason to keep this open. This is not humane. So, so we need to get Victor and all these other good America First candidates into office. We at Legacy Pack depend on your donation and support to support these projects. And we can't do it without you. So please go on to LegacyPack.org and show your support. I'm Jared Craig on behalf of Legacy Pack and Veterans for Trump and Veterans for America First. I'm proud to endorse Thomas Ballinger, who is running for Kentucky State Senate District 5. He is a former U.S. Army grunt and a disabled veteran. And uh, so, Thomas, thank you for coming on the show. Talk to our viewers about a little bit about your background and what motivated you to get into politics. Yes, my name is Thomas Ballinger. Uh, what motivated me to get into politics was the, uh, we had a Senate Bill 20, uh, 217 that we did not, the sportsmen and the veterans, sportsmen and the veterans in this situation did get any representation. And then uh, it just got reaffirmed by the Senate voting down a uh, House Bill 39, which took the legal the lawyers that do your VA benefits from taking so much of your back pay. And the Senate actually tripled that. It was, it was so outrageous. It wasn't even funny uh, about how they went through. So then they killed the bill uh, and did not let any veterans speak on it. So our veterans council or veterans committee has no voice. We had one Marine Corps Senator that actually stood up. And I've already messaged him and told him kudos. I said, you, you hold the fight because I'm coming. And uh, there's several other veterans that are running 
and we're just sick and tired of watching the veterans getting taken advantage of. And this bill you're talking about is when they, they get their benefits and they get the retro payment that the attorneys are taking a larger portion of a percentage as a contingent fee. Is that yeah. correct? And the first bill that you mentioned had to do with sportsmen and also veterans. Was that a gun control bill that they were trying to pass at the state level? No, that was actually a uh, a power grab type deal from the Senate to the from the governor. And uh, the reason why I wanted on the Game and Fish Commission is because one of the commissioners was saying, well, we don't have any veterans hunters. We don't have any disabled veterans hunters. And he was trying to snag that around to where he, he could get another term. Wrong answer. Yeah. When you mess with a veteran, you mess with a bunch of veterans. And right. I don't play. I I fought while I was in the service. I'll keep fighting. I do not care. You will not take veterans' benefits away. Well, it sounds like you got your heart in the right place. And one thing that us as an organization, or we as an organization, we're wanting to promote are more patriotic candidates. And there's no more patriotic group than the veterans. And veterans who are willing to step up and run for office to give that perspective to some of these bills, where other people might not see the power grab. Some people might not see the impact on veterans and especially when they have their benefits siphoned off by attorneys and seemingly doing them a favor. I'm an attorney myself, and I, I think that's egregious that you would uh, take three times the amount of a commission on a case by statute. So I'm on board with you there. Um, when you get in office, let's go ahead and say, what, what's your platform? What's the, the main thing that you're looking to do when you get in and represent District 5? District 5, the first thing I'm going to do is pick up that House Bill 39 and make it a Senate bill. And I'm, to be honest, I'm going to shove it down her throat as hard as I can. Veterans need to be represented, no ifs, ands, or buts. The second thing is uh, the gentleman I'm running against is for uh, health care regulations or health care control and open up that market to where you can get affordable health care in this state. Uh, okay. Right now, it costs a third more in this state to get, for instance, a hip replacement. If you do price comparison to the surrounding states, we're a third higher because we've got a certificate of need program. The the lack, our certificate of need controls how much your hospital can be open, how much radiology you can have, how many specialty cares you can have, how much ambulatory service you can have. They just initiated a uh, a new or awarded a new ambulatory program and in our one of our biggest cities close to the house here it went from 45 minutes to 14 minutes to get care the certificate of need is very detrimental to the public and it's detrimental to the veterans because we've got a lot of veterans clinics that don't have anything in them basically what they are is a stripped down aid station you've got a doctor that says okay you got to go to the hospital they don't have a Band-Aid. They don't have nothing. Like a triage. And, so they, they evaluate you and see if you need to just go home or go to an actual facility? Pretty much, yes. So they've spent millions of dollars setting that up, but the doctor can't do anything. And we've got one of the older VA hospitals in Louisville that several times has been on the slate to get replaced. It keeps getting pulled off. I will be the veteran's best friend because that affects me, that affects my family, that affects my brothers at arms, and yeah. I will not back down. Well, one thing that we're saying is that resources that were intended for veterans and resources that were intended for U.S. citizens are being usurped by illegal aliens. Um, facilities like what you're saying, uh, it's, it's basically a shell organization, but they're using that those facilities and other places to give aid, to give medical treatment to the illegal aliens and putting the veterans out of their, you know, I'm sure you've heard the stories about the housing for homeless veterans in New York and Chicago and shutting yes. down the schools for the children um, to put the illegal aliens in there. Are you seeing that also in Kentucky? I'm not seeing it in this area, but this area here is a We've only got Bowling Green, Kentucky as the major city, Bowling Green, Brandenburg, and Hardensburg. I'm not seeing it directly here, but I have got several friends in Atlanta and Chicago 
that they are standing and they're standing up. You know, I'm not just one person in the middle of nowhere. I've got several friends from across the country that I serve with and they are seeing it. Yeah, because every, every state's a border state with the Biden administration in place, moving the illegal aliens all over the place, I guess, to change the demographic of our country or to potentially, what's the word for, farming future Democrats. So yeah, I wasn't exactly. sure the, the, the nature of how it is in your district, but we're seeing it everywhere. And uh, it's good that you're not seeing it now, but it's just going to be a short period of time before it is a reality. So I understand that you uh, have a website, votebalinger.com, and I would invite all of our uh, District 5 viewers to go to that website. And if you have a donation to make, make a donation to uh, Thomas Ballinger and also donate your time if you have time to possibly help knock doors or just speak to people on the porch about who's the better candidate, who's the America First candidate. And when's your primary election coming up? May 21st is the primary election. The good thing about this area here, we're demographically a across the board about 71 to 72 percent Republican. So the biggest, my biggest challenge is the Republican race. Right. Uh, volu volunteer wise, I have got a good group of gentlemen that are like minded. Uh, me personally, I've handed out about 12,000 cards in the past two and a half months. Uh, we've put up over 1500 signs and talked to a lot of people in little restaurants, a lot of VFWs, a lot of, uh, American legions and you know we're tying all the loose ends together so we can try to make this happen on May 21st. Well I want to do a call to action for everybody in Kentucky's 5th district when you're choosing a state senator vote Thomas Ballinger and get to the, the vote on May 21st. Do you have early voting already started or do you have early voting that starts the beginning of June, or do you have that at all in Kentucky this year? Early voting, I do not know when it started. Some, I think it starts next week, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for being an American First candidate, and thank you for standing up for the veterans' rights. If it wasn't for candidates like you, uh, I think a lot of people would have swept these issues under the table. And to represent the, the needs of the veterans is, I believe, a sovereign duty. I take that on. I believe you've taken it on. So keep up the good work. And thank you very much for doing what you do. Thank you for having me, sir. Remember, vote Ballinger, May 21st.